to give this talk. It's uh, coming from various directions of development and topology. I will start with uh, very simple definitions and examples to set the uh, scene. So, uh, first of all, um, I will uh, recall few facts about uh, complex algebraic varieties. So the simplest examples are uh, the affine space. consider inside of these uh, varieties, we can consider hypersurfaces. Hypersurfaces, they are just uh, zero locus <coughs> of uh, just one polynomial. And 
for instance, uh, the affine space, the projective space, they are smooth varieties, and uh, this means that uh, they are complex analytic manifolds. I can choose local coordinates, and I can do all kinds of tricks I can do on a complex manifold. And there is a larger class of normal varieties. Now, what does it mean, a uh, normal variety? Essentially, a normal variety means uh, two properties. First of all, uh, the singularities are in codimension two. And then there is an extension property, which is a generalization of the hard box property. That if I have a locally function which is uh, defined and regular on the smooth part, then it, it extends to a regular function everywhere. And uh, examples of normal varieties arise in many situations. Two examples. Uh, they arise as uh, in, as quotient if I have a smooth variety and if I have a finite group for instance the quotient is always a normal variety and um, this result extends to various other quotients if uh, we are careful enough to define what we mean by quotient in the context of algebraic geometry. So uh, quotient varieties are usually normal. And uh, if I have um, hypersurface or complete intersection singularities, with uh, just uh, this property, let's call it star. These are also normal, so uh, the hard cost extension property is automatic uh, for this class of varieties. And in some sense, these two classes of examples are rather disjoint. For instance, in the case of uh, dimension two, Singularities are only the simple singularities of type, of type A, D, and E uh, are in the intersection of these classes of singularities. <coughs> okay, so we have some, some feeling now what are the normal varieties. And I uh, have, of course, uh, general varieties. And um, I will give you example of varieties which are not normal. And this is not so complicated. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> just look as uh, a 
collection of hyperplane coordinates, for instance, uh, if I am in Sicily, I can look at uh, this uh, hypersurface, and this is not normal, and uh, since normal varieties are in the branch. Unibranch means that the germ at any point, the analytic germ, is irreducible. And here, of course, I have three branches corresponding to the three hyperplanes. Right? And I also have a type of singularities, which is very important, and it's called the Whitney umbrella. has a whole equation. This is here again. And uh, if you like to have a picture, it's a little bit uh, like that. See if I put uh, z equal zero. So if I look at a horizontal plane, then I get just x equal uh, zero, and so I get this uh, y-axis, but uh, twice. This is reflected by the fact that this surface is tangent to the horizontal plane, and then as I move, um, if I take z to be non-zero, I get a union of lines, and uh, these lines <coughs> have various uh, <coughs> increasing angles. So in the beginning, uh, the section is just uh, linear by lines, and then they, the angle increases. <coughs> okay. So this is uh, the spaces we are interested in this talk. Now, why this talk is about topology? Because we are interested in fundamental groups of algebraic variety. I start with uh, the affine space and the projective space, then uh, everybody knows the answer. So um, these spaces are not so interesting because um, they are simply connected. And uh, so we have to consider more complicated algebraic varieties to get the interesting examples. And now if I go to hypersurfaces, if this hypersurface is a projective hypersurface, <coughs> and if I assume that the, <coughs> the dimension is at least two, so to avoid the, the curves, the complex curves, which are the same as the Riemann surfaces. So if I assume that uh, the complex dimension, so when I write dimension, it's always a complex dimension. Uh, then, no matter whether this is uh, smooth or singular, uh, this is a simply connected space. 
this follows by, for instance, from the work of uh, John Miller to study the connectivity of the link of the cone of such a singularity and uh, there is a close relation between uh, the so connectivity of the links and the connectivity of the associated hypersurface. And moreover, the same is true for uh, for uh, complete intersections. So you see that uh, if we stick to simple algebraic varieties, the fundamental group is not so complicated, at least in the objective case. Uh, what about the affine hypersurfaces? Surfaces, we can get interesting uh, fundamental groups quite easily. For instance, if I look uh, at this equation in C3, uh, then it is clear that uh, x and y can be any non zero complex numbers, but z is determined, and so uh, this hypersurface is isomorphic as an algebraic variety to C star square and so has a homotopy type over real torus and so you see that now we have some interesting fundamental group and so um, this result is definitely projective but not half. So, what is um, one possible type of question is, I give you the equations, can you tell me the fundamental group? Uh, this is a difficult question. And there are a number of results. And uh, for instance, I have a paper on the go. If you look in uh, the four G nineteen ninety. And then a continuation in topology uh, 2000 with a friend of mine, uh, Lorenzo Palmesco. Uh, we describe what happens to affine hypersurfaces. For instance, instead of uh, looking at this equation, assume that uh, you add uh, this linear part and you ask the same question, what is the fundamental group uh, of this hypersurface? And uh, if you apply the result in this paper, you will discover that this affine hypersurface is not simply connected. So uh, the fact that we have uh, two homogeneous components, which are separated in some uh, generic position with respect to each other, forces some connectivity properties for the corresponding affine hypersurfaces. <coughs> but uh, the story I'm going to tell you today is uh, of a different nature. So if uh, x is an algebraic variety, then x is a homotopy equivalent 
for finite um, W complex. And this implies that the fundamental group is finitely presented. Finitely presentable, if you want to be very precise about the words. And Carl uh, Simpson proved in uh, 2011 the following result. <coughs> so, any Reducibly, this goes back to the limit. Exactly. So um, the hard point uh, of this theorem was to construct an irreducible algebraic variety because if we allow um, several components, uh, then it is easy to construct examples, to construct uh, varieties having. Uh, fundamental group, any finite representative groups. Uh, the Lin made this observation 20 or 30 years ago using just uh, linear spaces. Because uh, any finite representative group can be represented as a fundamental group of a simplicial complex of dimension 2. And this can be approximated as a union of linear spaces in a High dimensional complex vector space. So the, the difficult part here is uh, the absolute. And um, the computation for the soon after that, you uh, use a couple of each. Uh, improves this result in the following way. <coughs> uh, this uh, algebraic variety can be chosen to be a surface. Okay, 
So uh, the proof here is completely different. We use a lot of uh, differential geometry and uh, arithmetic uh, group theory. And um, one open question at the moment is uh, can we avoid some of these similarities? So if you like to work on this type of questions, uh, one interesting question is, uh, can you construct uh, such a surface having the only normal crossing, for instance, <coughs> and get rid of uh, any umbrellas? And it's not at all clear if uh, this is possible. <coughs> Moreover, to pass from this result to the case one, we have here a surface. Uh, it is not just a simple application of uh, left shed hyperplane theorem, hyperplane section theorem, because in order to apply left shed hyperplane section theorem, uh, we need to start with a variety which is either smooth or has only singularities. Uh, which are of hypersurface type or, or complete intersection type, one cannot apply left just hyperplane section theorem to arbitrary singularities. So uh, it's not easy to reduce a dimension from uh, Simpson's result just by using the left just hyperplane section theorem. Okay? And uh, Now I will uh, report on um, on joint work. if you look at the diagram of the varieties which I draw over there and if you look at this uh, result <coughs> find the uh, finally presented group which is not Unfortunately, we are not able to provide such an example. And our work shows why it is difficult to find such an example. Because our work shows that a lot of the restrictions which apply to the fundamental group of smooth varieties applies as well to the fundamental groups of normal varieties. And so to construct such an example, we need essentially to, to look at uh, new invariants associated with the fundamental groups. Okay? So, um, 
I'm sorry, but is it known that such such example exists or not? Or is uh, we do not know if such an example exists. Okay. The feeling is that surely such an example exists, but we are not able to provide because uh, more of these varieties uh, cannot appear on a normal variety. Projective setting or now we are. Uh, this is a projective setting. Okay. Sorry, this is a projective setting. You are very right, but here uh, not necessarily. Sure. Sure. But here, of course, I'm the projective. <coughs> so. Uh, let X be a normal. Right. Assume that the dimension of x is at least 2, because in dimension 1, normal is the same as smooth, so there is no difference for curves. And uh, let x right be the smooth part of the And uh, let P be a resolution of singularity. And in particular, this means that P <coughs> is the inverse image on the regular part. Uh, and this is an isomorphism. Mm. Okay. And then so um, the first result to, to keep in mind is the setting, which was already known. In the following, um, if I look at the morphism induced by the resolution of singularities, and also the morphism induced by the inclusion of the regular part.
so, uh, remarks. The first remark is that uh, normality is necessary. means in this thing uh, that all the singularities are Russian singularities? Uh, it's not related to rationality or the singularities. <coughs> the link should be a the Russian homology sphere. Pure homology sphere. If, in particular, if there are Russian singularities, they satisfy this problem. But can be more. Okay. And uh, <coughs> the third uh, observation, um, many things, 
I, I would uh, show <coughs> many properties of those loose varieties, extend to the case of normal varieties. However, one has to be careful, not all the properties extend to the case of normal varieties. For instance, if x is normal, and if a is a algebraic subset of codimension, complex codimension, at least two, the inclusion of the fundamental group is not necessarily an, an isomorphism. Uh, if x is most, of course, this is an isomorphism because we can use transversality and uh, move uh, the loops around and we get an isomorphism. But uh, if we have singular objects, this is... Is this still on to, at least? Uh, yes, it, it is on to. This is consequence of that. So, okay. so objectivity is preserved, but not isomorphism. And uh, there are simple examples. Okay. So this is just a warning that the material is needed to handle such a variety. Projected normal, does this Hodge structure, does it imply formality or not? 
yes. It, uh, so, uh, for people like you, um, in our paper it is shown that this two condition implies that uh, x is one form. Mm -hmm. So this is a property on the fundamental groups, which is quite uh, useful, and I will come back to this uh, in a second. satisfy a lot of properties. So I will mention some of them. Of 
is an extension of Arakura's result. So Arakura, Don Arakura proves the result in the case when X is uh, smooth, quasi-projective, and uh, himself generalized the results by Bovill and Carla Simpson. And now in the paper we show that uh, similar properties apply to normal varieties. And what, what has its properties? So um, assume that X is normal. On dimension um, that is two. Then one plays something like that. For any irreducible component, V of uh, this characteristic variety. is positive and uh, the dimension of this uh, component is positive, there exists a morphism from X onto a smooth side with other number And the torsion local system LV, such that this, uh, this component can be described as all the local systems obtained from this uh, fixed portion of our system by taking the uh, tensor product with the pullback of the uh, local systems coming from the curve C. So it's a torsion transitive torus? Exactly. That's it. <coughs> So um, what uh, Alex uh, Sutri is saying is that uh, this space, uh, if we assume that uh, the homology of X uh, has no torsion, you can look at this as being some uh, affine torus. And uh, this result turns out that the yield screw components of strictly positive dimension are translated Subtori by torsion elements. In that case, you have an answer to, yeah. to to your first question. Yeah, it's obvious. Since uh, we know that these uh, characteristic varieties, in particular structure of their useful components, can be pretty much anything, this will contradict. Um, Normality. So not every finitely presented group can occur as finite normal varieties. It's just using uh, this. Yeah, maybe, maybe I, I have uh, forgot something. I have stated the open question uh, huh? in a wrong way. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so the, the true open question is find an example of a finitely presented group which is the fundamental group of a normal variety. And I do not, have a smooth one. But ah. not of a smooth one. Okay. Ah, I see. Now I see. Okay. Okay. So, um, now uh, there are a number of um, other technical statements and one can ask uh, what, what can be done with such results. Uh, so uh, let me call um, uh, the notion of uh, right angle <coughs> acting group. So 
right angle arcing group is a bit associated to a graph. Uh, suppose we have a, a graph consisting of this um, three vertices, and um, this means the associated uh, group will be a group on three generators, G1, uh, G2, G3, and uh, the relations are defined by the edges. Uh, two generators commute if they are connected by an edge. So in our case, uh, G1, G2 is uh, uh, G2, G1. Okay. And so um, this group, if uh, you look carefully, this is just Z2. Uh, Free product with another copies of Z. And uh, this is uh, the simplest group, which uh, is a right angle arching group, but it's not the fundamental group of um, a smooth variety. And uh, this was proved in a joint paper with uh, Stefan Paradima and uh, Alex Suchu uh, a number of years ago. And uh, the proof was completely based on the properties of resonance and characteristic varieties of smooth algebraic varieties. And uh, because we establish now the fact that for normal varieties, we have exactly the same properties, the conclusion is that this group is also different from uh, the fundamental group of a normal variety. And so we have examples of groups, a lot of groups, which are not a fundamental group of uh, normal varieties. Okay, so I think I will stop here and uh,